Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. Coming up, I get a new hog tooth knife, and CRKT comes out with a small CEO. And then we talk about my 10 chunkiest folders. Now, I like big folders. I like uh, I like a four inch blade length, and that generally tends to lead to a chunky knife. I have a good number of them, so I had to discipline myself in their selection. And we'll talk about that once we get there. Uh, but first, uh, before we get to anything else, how about a pocket check? Now, as we move into this pocket check, I want you to take personal stock of what you have in your pockets. I want you to go down to the comment section, and as I blather on about what I'm carrying, I want you to blather on the keyboard. And let me know what you're carrying. Either that, or you can call the listener line, 724-466-4487, and just say, this is my pocket check, Bob. I'm carrying X. Y and Z, because uh, most of you do carry X, Y, and Z, or at least X and Y. Today, I have X, Y, and Z, and X is a antimatter, or an antimatter, from Arcane Designs. Our good friend Israel Bacchus and Arcane Design uh, released this knife. He made this in collaboration with Felix of Something Obscene Company and had it made through Riyadh. Um I think Best Tech is the OEM on their other projects, uh, or, or on uh, uh, Israel's other projects. But for this one, they went with Riyadh, and what a gorgeous knife this is. Really um, rarely comes up that I need a dagger on me, but today I just felt, I don't know, who knows? Maybe it was something in the air, but I felt like I needed a dagger on me. Of course, I didn't use it all day. I did take it out and flip it around a little bit. Uh, I did end up using the other knives I had on me, but this is, you know, it's the front right pocket. It's the one I have to carry. And um, since I had secondary backup, more practical knives, perhaps more legal knives in my pocket uh, are on me today, I decided to carry this kind of for the art of it, I must say. Um, plus, in the old days, didn't everyone have a dagger on them? I, I think so. We'll just go with that. All right. Next up, uh, this week's uh, interview on the Knife Junkie podcast is with Jonathan Renaudin uh, or K. Maxrum. You know him as uh, just a prolific and awesome designer from France. He lives in the Pyrenees Mountains, which I find pretty cool. You can see uh, his uh, his native environment on his Instagram feed. He puts up a lot of beautiful pictures of his knives and frequently with coffee or the Pyrenees as his background. This is the Pelican made by Concept Knives. And it is, uh, this was the first concept I got. And it was because of this K Max ROM design. Uh, like I said, I've been following him on Instagram for about six years. Always loved uh, his work. His blade designs, all of them have that swale, have this, uh, this nice finger well, thumb well on the back of the blade. And I've always loved that shape on the back of the blade. And I think that started years and years ago with Terminator 2 when I discovered the SOG, uh, the SOG Bowie. Actually, it may have been Uncommon Valor before that. But anyway, early days, I discovered the SOG Bowie. I love the, the, the dips and swoops on the back of that Bowie blade. And K Maxrom's designs include that. And, and it's handy for a couple of reasons. The most obvious and useful is right here. Uh, thumb on the back of the blade for power cuts. You know, you're really horsing this S35VN thinly ground, flat ground blade through something. You really want to back it up with your thumb. It's the perfect spot there. But my imagination and my martial arts experience takes over, and I look at that, and I say, yes, in reverse grip, this swale or this uh, this this little curved uh, portion for your thumb on top of the blade could also trap an opponent's arm. Uh, or wrist. Uh, you could use that curve to to pinch someone against you in a moment of control. Uh, now, this is all uh, theoretical. These are techniques I've learned, and perhaps they're self-perfection techniques, trapping with a knife and, and, and that kind of thing. Um, self-perfection meaning maybe this is not how a fight goes. Maybe you would never use that trap in a real fight uh, with a knife, but like it might look more like a prison shanking in real life. But 
learning how to do all that stuff and flowing in and out of it with a partner who also knows what they're doing um, can lead to uh, better movement, better ideas of range and this kind of thing. So it can add to your attributes and be a self-perfection, maybe not a self-preservation. But anyway, I look at that swoop and I think trapping. So to me, this is a very cool uh, little tactical knife. And if you listen to the interview, <clears throat> with Jonathan, uh, you'll hear as much. I asked him, why did you design this and that bellied Warncliffe version of this Pelican? He's like, the bellied Warncliffe is more for utility stuff. The point is center line, and uh, it's got a, a, a gently curved uh, surface to cut with. This one, the Tanto, is intended more for that tactical use with that with the point up top and the, the real piercing capability. So, so that that thought was behind the design, even though it's it's all EDC and it's all just, you know, theoretical until it's not. So uh, so today so far I had a dagger on me. I had a Tanto, uh, both beautifully modern manufactured, one from Concept, one from Riot. And uh, and and then the last one I have here on me is a hogtooth knife, hogtooth knives. Uh, Matt Chase, he's been on the show a couple of times, and he made my 50, 50th, uh, 50th anniversary, my 50th birthday knife, the beautiful and much bandied about loveless subhilt fighter. And uh, <clears throat> this is one of his works, uh, but it's it's way more EDC. And this is stock removal. The other knives he produces are forged. This is 154 cm. It's a little uh, EDC fixed blade and uh, uh i saw it i saw it uh one of one of the viewers sent me a picture and forgive me uh that i'm spacing on your name right now i know who you are and we communicate but uh uh this gentleman got one pointed me in the direction hey you you let me know who hogtooth knives is check out what he's making and i i did got in touch with him and i picked this up from him it's 154 cm steel and it's an incredibly ground, hollow ground tanto. As you can see, it's a beautiful three and a half. Ah, just stuck myself on the point. Beautiful three and a half inch blade. Very thinly hollow ground down by the edge. And then, and then as you can see, uh, that, that uh, initial bevel, that, that sharpened edge there is laid back pretty far. So it's wickedly, wickedly sharp. And then the, the front is that sort of, almost Chris Reeve knives uh, style Tanto where, where um, you know, it just comes to a little wedge up front. Uh, okay, so let me tell you about this knife. <clears throat> uh, this past weekend, we had some neighbors over, people we met at the pool this summer, um, expanding our circle. We had them over. It was really nice. We had a fire pit. And I was, this was before they came over. I didn't want to be under the gun making a fire before they got there. But beforehand, I decided this fire was going to be made with a fire with a feather stick and i used first i used the um, finch harvester this worked very well to start feather sticking uh, the wood i was doing but i started to get nervous because of the the hinge and this is a robust knife uh but the the wood was pretty dry and i was using having to use a lot of force so using a folder started to, to get a little nerve-wracking to me um so i ended up pulling out the tanto this new hog tooth knives tanto just kind of on a lark and oh my gosh it did a wonderful job this was what i ended up using and i feather sticked the whole thing and then i used my bic lighter to light the feather stick on fire but still after that initial bic lighting that was it just me and the elements and uh, a raging fire grew from there uh but this was the knife that did it this uh this little hog tooth knives um tanto and you look at it and you think oh that's a little backup weapon that's a little but what a great utility knife this thing is uh it's got a a perfect little handle that can give me a four finger grip giant meat meat hook hands might have a hard time with this but i know matt uh, the maker of this is a bigger guy than i am and his his hands are bigger and uh this is comfortable to him so i assume uh it's a it it will fit a lot of hands. If you look at the radius of the choil and that uh, that that front finger area, that's what it indicates the fact that most hands will fit on that because most fingers will fit in that in that radius. 
Uh, it's got this uh, rounded off pommel, which makes it very comfortable for in the waist carry because it doesn't poke into your ribs and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't intrude on your love handles. It's, it's perfectly uh, shaped and length. I find that uh, fixed blade knives that I like to carry kind of need to have shorter handles uh, just to be comfortable. Um, an interesting feature is this material. Uh, it is a maroon. I went for it because it was maroon. He showed me two different options. He has has slash had one with natural canvas micarta. And you know, I love natural canvas micarta, but right now I'm really into the maroon handled knives. This is a G10 alternating with rubber. Uh, so it's layered and it's it's maroon G10 layered with black rubber. Let's see if we can get that to focus. Probably not, but uh, take my word for it. <laughs> As you can see, uh, the black and the red sort of swirl there on the surface. And it's minorly grippy. You barely can tell, but it's just enough. You know, I was concerned that under, you know, in the waistband and under a shirt, that this material would grab uh, the fabric of my shirt and be uncomfortable, but it's not at all. It works great. And now look, it's a little big knife, three and a half inches. Look at it compared to um, the medium-sized uh, dagger here, the medium-sized um, antimatter. It's about the same length in uh, blade, but it doesn't need all that handle to accommodate the blade. So it's an overall shorter package. This thing carries great. He made an awesome... Uh, a Kydex sheath, and my he added my favorite carry um, clip, which is the concealed concepts carry clip. So this is what I'm carrying today, and uh, it it got very little use, but it got a lot of a lot of play. Let me let me say, uh, I've been into the uh, I've been into the K Max ROM designs, and I'm really very much looking forward to um, the Pretatu Pretatu, which is ready for every ready for anything. And I, when we were talking, I kept, could not remember the name of that knife. And then I realized, uh, uh, pret, pret means ready, like pret-a-porter, ready to wear. And then, um, to, uh, uh, to, well, everything to, what, okay, whatever. But, but it made sense to me then. So it's a, it's a French made, uh, or French designed, French named knife coming out from concept. Uh, check it out. It'll be in clip point or, uh, Tanto can't wait for that all right i'm moving on now i'm moving on so pocket check let me know what you are carrying and also um let me know if you're interested in patreon because uh, i was just talking about uh the interview show and every interview show now we do uh an extra 10 to 20 minutes of um of interview extras just for patron and patreon members and it's a that's where i ask questions that maybe you know maybe they're not family friendly they're, they're family friendly but but maybe they're a little more personal or a little more polarizing let's put it that way and maybe they're not for the far and wide so so the questions i ask in the conversations we have afterward uh on these uh these little exclusive extra conversations are a little more off the cuff and i love them and they were all jim's idea he was like after we stop rolling after these interviews you end up having great conversations we need to record those and uh i thought that was a great idea and so this this is an extra we bring to you as part of what you get uh, when you join Patreon. And of course, if you're a gentleman junkie, that's our top tier. You also win, uh, you are entered to win a monthly knife. This uh, past month, it was a budget uh, bundle giveaway that Jock won across the shock. So I uh, that is on the way to him. And we'll see what we have next month. So uh, join us on Patreon. That's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. The quickest way to get there, again, is thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So part of its whole rebirth, Gerber has some new knives coming out. And uh, Gerber has been on the slow upward trend for a number of years now, uh, kind of kind of like SOG, uh, sort of a, a similar story. Uh, SOG started off in the 80s, you know, well, long after Gerber, but SOG started up, they had some great kind of exclusive items, hard to get or maybe expensive items. And then they went total big box store and their design suffered and quality suffered. And, uh, but the last three to four years, they've been coming back. They've rebranded. They've, they've, 
been taking themselves seriously again. And I feel like the same thing has happened to Gerber. Gerber, I used to have way up on a pedestal because in the 70s, my dad had the Gerber version of the 110 up on his shelf in his den. Uh, and it was so cool. It was such a great knife. Unfortunately, uh, my dad sharpened it on a on a wheel grinder and, <laughs> and he must have sneezed. But it was a great knife. And uh, I, I wonder where that thing is. Uh, so I always thought Gerber was excellent um, from from that early impression as a kid. And then somewhere they lost their compass, but now they're coming back. All right, that's all a long setup for this one that looks very interesting to me. It's inexpensive and the materials uh, reflect it, but it looks like a great design. And I think it's a, a really good direction for Gerber. Uh, this new knife, it's called the Zilch. Uh, and uh, Zilch is a sort of colloquial term, I guess, for nothing. And this is a paring down uh, and... So I could see why they use the name Zilch. Now, incidentally, Zilch is the name of uh, a game I grew up playing. It's an Italian dice game with six die, and uh, Zilch is the name of it. And uh, I learned it from my grandma. So that's what I think of. I don't think of the, the term nothing. I, I think of that game. Um, but it's a kind of a good-looking design. If you, if you look at it, it's a slender carry, very slender handle. It's a 2.86-inch uh, blade. Uh, and it's got that thumb stud there. You see that fuller, that's actually a groove upon which or through which you can move that uh, thumb stud. So you can adjust the thumb stud. It's it's FRN, basically. It's, it's fancy plastic, but it comes in a number of different colors. It's got some milling. It's slender. It's kind of stylish, I think. It comes in at like 28 bucks. So it's super cheap. It's got a, um, I should say super inexpensive. It's got a liner lock and 7CR17 MOV. Now that, that's the trade-off. But if anyone here has ever gotten a CRKT from Lowe's or Home Depot or Target or uh, uh, Walmart and used it like a minimalist or something, you've used 5CR15 MOV and it's been fine, right? It's actually been fine. You've strapped it up when you've needed it. Uh, but, you know, for a knife that you're not using all the time for heavy work, It'll do in a pinch. So I have a feeling that this little Gerber Zilch at 28 bucks with uh, 7CR17 MOV and FRN handles will probably do pretty well. So, I mean, to me, this is kind of an exciting development, uh, not a cheap Gerber because we've seen plenty of those, but I like the design and it seems like a, a, like more thought has gone in, into it. Uh, the past few years, they've had the... Um, Oh, what's that one that looks like a straight razor? I like that one. And they've had a couple of of stylish entries, and it looks like they were they were trying to capitalize on the the cleaver trend. And 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 I like where they were going with that. But with with this one here, it doesn't seem trendy. It seems like you could get this knife and um, be happy with it and run it into the ground. Frankly, I mean, it's a twenty eight dollar knife. So I'm I'm kind of interested in this Gerber Zilch, and uh, maybe I should actually. Uh, pick one up and I'm saying this right now and I also hate when people say pick up a knife for some reason but maybe I should buy one of these and put my money where my mouth is but it it, it looks somewhat compelling to me so that's the Gerber Zilch and uh, yeah easy on the wallet easy on the eyes I gotta say uh, I, I must admit okay next also easy on the eyes is uh, one of uh, one of Jim's favorite knives. He's got he's got the larger version of this. This is the CRKT CEO. Compact. Yes, that's right. They've taken a very slim and slender Richard Rogers design. By the way, we ha we had Richard Rogers on the show. Very interesting cat. You should check it out. Uh, but they have taken the CEO, which is a knife that was kind of intended to look like a pen, a, a knife, a knife slender enough and uh, and pen-like enough that you could just actually put in your breast pocket and carry around. Um, well, they came up with a smaller version of it. And to look at it, I actually, I really like the way this one looks even better. It's, S, it's a premium offering. Excuse me, that drop point blade is S35VN. I like the shape of that flipper. That's what I'm getting to. Um, and then the handle is a... Um, a uh, uh, carbon fiber, a, um, what do you call it? Uh, shredded carbon fiber. It looks great. 
Bob, you hate carbon fiber. You know, I just hate the old style carbon fiber. I'm coming around to, to the uh, cool versions of carbon fiber. But if you look at this picture that Jim uh, put up on screen, you'll see the difference. The one on the left is the standard traditional CEO. Um, and then the one to the right is the compact. I think it looks awesome. Uh, it's just a hair under three inches. Uh, the original, or, right? I think it's just a hair under three inches. The original, I know, yeah, it's 2.6. The original was 3.11. So it's a, you know, substantial reduction. But the exciting part are the materials. Now, I've been saying this for a long time. I've been beating this drum. CRKT does so much innovating and they do so much uh, in the way of collaboration with famous designers and and they use such bunk materials i mean not bunk i mean come on we all know we can cut with 8 cr13 but we know that there's stuff out there that's inexpensive that's better so why not go that way so uh, as birdshot iv says they must have been sitting on like a 10 year stack of of 8 cr13 mov and they continue to make knives out of that material but their design everything else their build is very high quality i have found in the knives i've had from CRKT fit and finish, all of that is on point. Why not just charge a little bit more and put in better materials? It doesn't have to be S35 VN each time. It could be D2, you know, that's a step up. It could be a 154 CM, which I love and, you know, which is 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 ever ever less expensive as the, as the more high performance steels uh, become more available. So CRKT, take these awesome designs. Like, look at the Icoma, look, one let me the fossil what a beautiful knife the fossil is they put all of this attention and time into sculpting the handle sculpting the clip that that gorgeous uh recurved hollow ground blade i mean they spend a lot of time and attention on that knife that comes to us from a designer that is way out of reach for pretty much all of us um but they do it in these in, in rather chintzy materials why not up that and allow us to have a a, uh, a knife from a, an American company, it might not be American made, but at least in premium American materials like S35VN or something like that, and charge us just a little bit more, but make that available. I think the CEO Compact, and I know they've been kind of teasing at this for a while, um, but I see CRKT moving in that direction. They have to. They have to. They're going to have to. So uh, anyway, I don't mean to get so passionate about this, but the CEO compact is a good harbinger for CRKT. I want to get more CRKT knives. I do indeed. Thank you. Thank you for listening to that diatribe. Let me know what you think of the new CEO compact. Is this material upgrades? Is this a good sign? Is CEO? RKT uh, moving in the right direction? Or should they stick with the super inexpensive but high concept designs? I'm not sure. Well, I am sure. I want to know what you know, but what you think. All right, still to come, uh, State of the Collection. We're going to show you a, a, a new knife from Russia, a new knife from Massachusetts, and then we're going to talk about 10 of my chunkiest folders. Stay tuned. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. I talked about it a lot in my pocket check, so I guess I won't go on too much, but I'm so excited about it. Uh, this is my new Hogtooth Knives EDC Tanto. I think I'm going to come up with a name for it. Um, not like uh, Claudette or, Ber or Bernadine, but I mean something like, uh, um, I don't know, a name that he can call it because this is one of those uh, knives that um, Matt can reproduce uh, with high fidelity and and a quickness in a different way than his forged blades which are are more unique one-off pieces um i'm excited to see him doing doing this i mean um matt chase has been making knives since he was 20, 18 or 20 and uh he's not quite as old a fart as i am but he's getting up there so he's been doing this a long time his grinding is out is, is like amazing and uh so though I am 
a super fan of his forging work. Uh, it's also cool to just see him let his grinding shine. And this is stock removal, 154 cm. Uh, I think this is three sixteenths of an inch thick. This hand filed jimping is just oh, it's luxurious. Uh, you've got the the um, finger guard. I showed this to my wife, and she said mm, just just a sixteenth of the of an inch off the finger guard. Uh, so maybe the finger guard is polarizing in this household, but I love it. I think it's actually, uh, well, it's ideal because to me, uh, this seems like a like a backup thing. It is a tool, as I learned uh, this weekend, using it to make feather sticks. It's an awesome just utility knife. But of course, you know, I bought it thinking of it uh, as a weapony kind of thing. And I love that finger guard uh, just in case the, the thumb capping the pommel fails. You're not going to slide up. Or if you have it like this, you're not going to slide up. Um, I think it's an awesome design. And as I told Matt, I'm like, uh, uh, this is a handle set, you know, that you could keep right up to there, with the, including the guard. And then you can make a bowie and you can make a sax blade or a sheep's foot or something like that and have, uh, you know, multiple uh, different blades on this one handle and make a line of them. And you know that you would have at least one customer. So. That would be me. Very, very sharp. Very impressed with this knife and, and thrilled to have it. You know, I've been on a bit of a, a fixed blade, a custom fixed blade tear recently uh, this past year. And if, if, if at all interested in trying to dive into the custom world and you like fixed blade knives, they are, you know, infinitely, not infinitely, they're, they're, they're very much more affordable because of there's less work that goes into them in terms of mechanisms and all that. And um, everyone needs fixed blades. So, so go out there and uh, take a look on Instagram, find your favorite uh, custom fixed blade maker and buy one, save up a little bit of money and buy one. And uh, you know, for the, for the half the price of a hinderer knife, you can have a custom made uh, fixed blade. It feels great. It's awesome. All right. Next is a knife that I got from our good friend Levan of the Knife Nuts podcast and Le, from L Russia with Levan. And that is uh, this is the Arcona Nettle, the Nettle. And as you can see, it's a front flipper. And as you can also see, I had no trouble flipping it. And we're going to try it left handed here. No problem. So liner lock. I mean, um, uh, um Inline flippers or front flippers have come a long way. Designers have uh, have begun to really um, home in on the right geometry to make it easy to open these damn things without cutting yourself. Uh, this is designed by <clears throat> Ivan Braganets of Russia. I have a number, and uh, not a number. I have one other of his knives. The uh, the um, the Crystal Aurora. I, I really dig his design style. And this is a knife uh, that is more on the budget side. As you can see, it's it's got this uh, layered micarta, black and, and uh, blue micarta. It's got cool hardware. It's got beautifully anodized aluminum backspace or deep carry pocket clip. Uh, this is K110, which is kind of like D2. Um, it's about an $80 knife, and I cannot put it down. I've had it for over a week now. This was a gift from Levon. Thanks, Levon. Really appreciate it. Um, I think they're making another batch of these currently, and they will be available sometime in the future. But, uh, wow, I, I just really, really dig this. I, I Like I said, I'm not putting it down. I'm very fidgety with it. I can even open it with my left hand forefinger, which to me is incredibly impressive and i can tell that you're impressed um but uh yeah what what a what a great knife i love this look at the access to the lock bar very very nice it's got a little finger guard here the blade itself uh the edge sits lower than the than the dorsal side of the handle i really like that it's got jimping in all the right places and then you can take that clip and swap it to the other side i uh, showed this one on thursday night knives uh two weeks ago and and uh, didn't have a chance to show it off here but uh it it is an mvp i've been carrying it a lot so these are the two new uh new things oh oh there is one more and jim sorry i didn't add this in the notes i forgot uh this one last week because it was still sitting on my my work uh 
my desk at work. So let me just bring this in here. I also got this a couple of weeks back. This is the Finch Drifter. Finch Drifter. This was a gift from the gentleman at Finch, Stephen Spencer. Thank you, guys. I really, really, really like this knife a lot. I mean, when when uh, they came on the birthday bash, they were talking about how this was coming out soon. They showed one off, and I went crazy for it. You know that Bowie blade is just... It's such a cool shape here. I'm going to hold it here so you can see the the profile. It's such a nice Bowie shape. Uh, first thing I thought of was I'd love a, uh, you know a nine inch version of this. Uh, you know this this including the handle. I mean the handle shape. It's sort of a traditional coffin uh, handle shape uh, in the handle there, and it's got that great little flipper that acts as a positive finger choil. And uh, just a great little knife. It's been making the rounds. Not this one. This one's mine. But uh, a lot of people have gotten this recently. And I know people are impressed. It's very, very sharp. It's very, very slicey. And it's got that incredible point. And beautiful snakeskin scales. You can get it also in a denim, uh, denim micarta. Really brilliant and beautiful looking denim micarta uh, there. So check them out. Finch Knives. Good friends of the show, and uh, man, I love their I love their knives. All right, so let's get to the the main event here. My ten chunkiest folders. I got a lot of chunky folders, and so I I had to make a couple of rules. And one of them was kind of like stick to one per brand. I could have put all cold steels out here because I have some really big chunky cold steels, but I wanted to stick to things that I would carry regularly, and I don't carry the large cold steel knives regularly. Um, I just don't. Who has the pocket space? All this money, I can't stick a giant knife in that in that pocket. You know, I'm sorry. Okay, so moving on. I don't mean to brag. I don't mean to brag here, but you know, what can I say? Okay, so first up, speaking of cold steel, is a Demko knife. Cold steel is respond. I mean, Andrew Demko is responsible for for like many, 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 many of the great cold steels, probably most of them, uh, or close to all of them. Uh, not taking anything away from Lynn Thompson, of course, but Andrew Demko was a revolution for that country, uh, for that company, a revelation. And <laughs> I'm going to shut up, man, a revolution for that country. So the first one I have here is the 80, 20. This is the, uh, the, I got to say, it's like one of the hottest knives of the last two years. It features the shark lock, which uh, we're all familiar with at this point. A uh, a lock that rivals the strength of both the triad and the triad and the scorpion lock. And, uh, and this also is inspired somewhat by the lock that he built, the plunge lock that he built for the, what was it? The folding Bushman. Uh, so the, you pull this back the blade drops like magic. Uh, it's got a nice thick blade and that this whole uh, area where the lock is housed, that's where a lot of the chunk resides. Um, but also in the width of it and in the um, this this uh, tallness of it. So this is a this is a pretty chunky knife, pretty heavy, over a half inch thick. To me, the half inch is about, you know, is about standard, like half inch and less. And when they go above that, to me, it's uh, it's in the chunk category. So this is nice and heavy. It's got a thick blade. It's very, very, very sharp, but it's a chunker of a it's kind of a wedge shaped blade there. This would be a great candidate for a regrind. Um However, the grind it already has on it, I love. And since it's a chunky knife, I don't need it to have that super fine, super thin blade. Uh, 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 what do you call it? Bevel. So I'm going to stick with how it is. But I can see why people get these reground because they are pretty chunky. All right. So uh, 80 20. Let's see. Next is this is such a classic. What a beautiful knife. This comes to us from um, Zero Tolerance. Uh, Kai USA and Ken Onion, and it's the classic Zero Tolerance Zero Two Hundred. Beautiful shape and curve curves on this knife. I mean, it is a 
Ken Onion design through and through. Um, I would say the first 15 years of tactical knives that I was really into them, that thumb ramp, thumb ramps in general, just had me in their sway, had me in their thrall, I think is the word. Uh, I love the way they look and I love the way they feel. And this one was probably the knife that uh, really introduced me to that. Now, this was a knife that was on my bucket list for a long time. And then my brother just straight up gave it to me. He had it. He had bought it. He never carried it. We were talking about it and he made it my Christmas gift one year. I was just visiting him, hanging out. And he's like that. My brother is incredibly generous and just a just a great guy. But funny thing is, is I've shown off a lot of knives that he's given me and people have said, uh, can I have your brother too? <laughs> and I'm like, he's mine. Uh, so if you look at this knife it, you know, from the top down, you can see how giant those titanium liners are. I mean, they are huge chunks and they do a little weight relief on the inside, which for the time this was made is was not a usual thing this is a this is not a new knife um but it does have that flow through construction and look at that can you see how it's contoured this way too it's like coke bottled so you have a contour this way with all of that milling and then when you turn it and look down from the top you can see it widens out at the palm a little bit like a traditional fixed blade knife so i mean this is a chunker and has never been very comfortable to carry uh, for me. And I like carrying chunky knives, but this one has always been a little bit much for me. Uh, though, uh, in any case, I still sanded down this milling under the clip to make it possible to carry, but it gets carried very little. It does get taken out and appreciated and fondled, uh, but it, it is such a chunky knife. And this choil here is just ever so small ever so slightly small and I do not have giant hands. So the chunkiness and the width of the handle and then this width of the of the swell here, forcing your hand into that small-ish choil has always made this feel a little constricting. So chunky and constricting, but uh, you know, still an amazing knife. 154 CM, which when this came out was the bomb. All right, next is from off-grid knives they have a lot of chunky knives off-grid knives and for this list it was a toss-up between this next knife and the black stallion now the black stallion is a runner-up because it's pretty slender you know width wise but it's broad you know it's a lot in your hand this way but i i ended up choosing the off-grid enforcer xl this is my car knife these days this thing is huge. It's a solid four inch long blade and the handle is just, it's just massive. It's long, it's thick, it's wide. All right. Uh, let's talk about the texture here. It's got, even the texture here is chunky. It's got a field uh, it's got like a crop of pyramids instead of instead of texture being milled down into the surface it's it's uh it's almost as if it's it's milled so far down into the surface that it's three dimensional upward so everything about this knife is chunky you you look at the backspacer here and it's not very large but it is solid and it houses this very large glass breaker here Everything about this knife is kind of Texas. It's like it's large in, in all dimensions and it's heavy here. It's heavy in the back. So it gives you some weight uh, and some anchoring if you're actually going to use that glass breaker. This knife is uh, this blade is D2. Very, very sharp. This is one of those knives where I'll just relent and say, OK, fine. It's a reverse tanto. Fine. You know, I prefer the term bellied Warncliffe, but I guess I see what you mean. If you lack imagination and you just have to go to reverse Warncliffe, I get it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being a curmudgeon, but that's partially my birthright. One thing, uh, well, I mean, this knife does a lot of things, right? I love this knife. But one thing it does especially well here is here, uh, the pocket clip. As you can see, it they have a little milled pocket for the pocket clip to sit in and they have the flathead screws so it's not going to tear up your pocket 
What is going to tear up your pocket is this <laughs> extremely harsh uh, surface texture. So this one doesn't get much pocket carry, but it, it gets a lot of fidgeting and it, in the car at stoplights only. And, uh, and it's there for use. Cause I feel like this thing could blast me out of a car if I needed to, uh, if I needed to, you know, break out of it post accident, heaven forbid. I don't know. This is where your mind goes. Once you become a parent, you think of the worst things all the time. Uh, okay. So next up is the chunkiest here by far the chunkiest here, but since it's a custom, I'm not, I'm not saving it to last. Um, because it's not something that's readily available, but this is my chunkiest knife. This is the uh, uh, Greg Lightfoot Element, designed by um, uh, uh, Mr. Oh my gosh, why am I why am I spacing on his name? Jim, Jim, what's his name? Uh, I, I will get it in a second. It will come back to me in a second. I keep thinking Vanderbeek, but it's not. Uh, so this was a. Uh, a custom order from Greg Lightfoot after I had him on the show. Um, he does exquisite uh, custom knives in crazy Damascus. And I mean, his handles are just amazing. Now here I asked him just for a plane. I, 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 you know, couldn't really afford his amazing. And he said, I could make you one of my old school practical tacticals. I said, yes, please. And he did it for me as a favor. He doesn't ordinarily do that. He makes these, these handles that are intricate with all these crazy exotic materials. Um, but he made me this in this contoured um, micarta. And uh, it is a chunker. Let's see. It is almost an inch thick. Uh, it's three quarters of an inch thick. The handle. And up here, it's even a little bit more. Um, but look at those liners. Just solid, chunky. I mean, I have blades that thick i have blades thinner than that look this this uh, harvester the blade of the harvester is not even as thick as the liner on this uh greg lightfoot this is not a user for me this is a this is an uh an art piece for me this is something i have to appreciate i carry it every once in a while but frankly it does not carry well um it is huge it is kind of awkwardly shaped for the pocket uh, you know, with, with the blade and everything, it's pretty wide and the beautiful, uh, this is uh, Chad Nichols, Damascus pocket clip does not give you much clearance. Um, all of that is, uh, you know, just incidental to the fact that this is just a gorgeous, amazing knife. It also has supreme action. It's got incredible action for such a giant chunk. It, uh, it uh, behaves beautifully and actually it's extremely sharp and has this really cool, weird grind. So there you go. Um, that is the element from Greg Lightfoot, a chunker probably well, the chunkiest uh, next is probably the chunkiest that gets the most carry. And this is the hinderer XM 24. In this case, the Bowie, I have an aftermarket, uh, my car to scale on there though. I do love the texture so much of the, of the hinderer scales. I'm thinking of getting a textured, you know, in the traditional milling texture, um, my car to handle for this. And, you know, it's nice to be able to swap out, but just a big, big knife. It's big in, in every way. It's got a long handle. It's thick. It's heavy got a giant thick blade stock and uh it's long i mean this is a this is a chunker of a knife but it carries well it carries well if you look at it compared to the the uh, profile of say this uh light foot you can see it's just a lot more slender there's a lot less there than say this knife now that's that's not your uh average way of selling the smallness of a hinderer by comparing it to the the biggest knife you have but it is a uh it is you know uh decently carryable because half of that is uh, you know it does have a titanium liner on the show side but half of that is this composite material in this case uh micarta oftentimes g10 so it lightens it up makes it more uh, easier to carry
This one has an S35 VN blade, and they haven't done the uh, Bowie in a long time. So I'm I'm very grateful to have this um, this specimen. All right, next up is the is an Emerson. A lot of Emersons are not as chunky as you might think, uh, but the uh, this you know what the smaller ones actually the minis seem like chunky because they don't reduce the size in any way but length and width. They don't it's not like they don't they don't take the girth out of it at all. So they're they are like little little bricks. Uh, but this is the Super CQC8, and uh, this is another one my brother gave me actually. Thank you, Vic. And this sucker is a chunker. The story behind this knife is it was donated to the channel by uh, uh, Stone and Steel, I believe. Um, and then we auctioned it. My brother bought it, <laughs> you know, won the auction, and then he gave it to me. So, wow, what a roundabout way of getting what I want, huh? Uh, story of my life. So this thing feels chunky because, well, because it is. It is a pretty large, it's just like, a scaled up version of the seven. We know that the seven is a medium sized knife and this is just broad in the hand. It feels like, you know, it feels like you're holding a board <laughs> kind of, uh, but in a comfortable way, it's a neutral ish handle neutral with a little bit of swelling here. Uh, but it's just a big damn knife and that blade being chisel ground feels like there's a little bit more material on it. Uh, but I, I think that's just actually uh, an illusion because if it were V ground, it would be ground at a different angle and presumably the same, same amount of steel would be removed. It would just be uh, in a different configuration. But in terms of my collection and uh, Emerson plays heavily in my collection, this is definitely my chunkiest uh, in the Emerson canon. Next up is the knife I was carrying when my youngest daughter was born, my sweet little girl, and uh, that is the Vox-designed Boker F3, and this is a uh, production version of a much highly, highly coveted um, Vox Custom. I think he only made like 11 of them or something crazy like that, but the design is so compelling Boker picked it up. They did a couple of things to it. Uh, uh, first of all, they they made it optional tip up, which I'm happy about because the custom was tip down only. Uh, you know, if I could get a Vox custom, I would suffer through that detail. Um, they also added a swedge to the to the clip point blade. The I remember the Vox custom version did not have a swedge. I do like the swedge there. I got to say, uh, I'm a swedge guy. Uh, and also, uh, they changed the whole, uh, shape on the Vox custom. It was a circular opening hole, like a Spyderco hole, which I assume he got, um, permission to do on that limited run of custom knives. But obviously Boker is not going to pay, um, Spyderco to put a circular hole. So they put a more oval lozenge shaped hole. Uh, but this thing is a chunky beast i mean it's there is zero weight reduction on these very thick titanium slabs uh you know this thing's in your pocket it's not very big lengthwise if you look at it compared to say the xm here it's not like the biggest knife but it feels like it i mean just anecdotally these feel about the same weight so like i said no weight reduction and these titanium slabs are thick and then the, the blade stock is thicker than anything on the table here so far. Let's see. Yeah, it's even thicker than the XM, uh, uh, than the 8020. Sorry, I don't have my calipers. I'm not a caliper guy. I don't even know how to read them. Uh, so anyway, sorry. I, sh I should have said that's the quiet part I said out loud. Uh, so here, one thing I love about this is the handle shape. Uh, I talk frequently about um, multi-finger choils and how I don't like them. In this case, I really like this. It's a gentle, it's a gentle shape, this curve and then this flat. And, and your fingers can kind of rest in so many different ways there. But even but having this little cutout really does aid in retention. So uh, just a masterful design from uh, from 
Jesper Voxnes of of he's Danish, right? I was going to say Daneland of Denmark, uh, and then really, really uh, well produced by Boker. I've had a number of really, really good Bokers. Uh, had pretty much only good experiences, though. I know for a long time they they were sort of, um, I don't know, uh, beaten not beaten down. They were criticized often for their fit and finish, but I haven't run into any issues at all. Uh, next chunker is from Sog, who I mentioned earlier. Now, this knife is another little big knife. This is a three-inch bladed knife, but it feels much bigger. This is the Sog Kiku XR. Very nice micarta handles. Now, this, this is Sog at their best, I believe, uh, currently. All that being said, I still want to see them go back to the classic uh, leather-handled um, combat classic blades. Um, but in terms of folding knives and EDC kind of stuff, this is the best I think I've seen SOG. It's got uh, really excellent action. So this is it's got a very good flipper slash axis lock action. They call the axis lock the XR. Um, but it's it's a bar lock that goes, it's a bar that goes across the tang. It's a bar lock. It's got an omega spring. Actually, I'm not sure if the spring here is omega or not, but it's got a spring in there. And uh, the action is outstanding. It is a very, very fidgety, very uh, fun to use knife. You can flip it. You can spidey flick it. Actually, one could spidey flick it. I don't find it very comfortable to spidey flick. But everything else about this knife, I love. It's, it's broad from dorsal to pectoral uh, region on the handle. Um, the blade is nice and broad, hollow ground, flat ground in the front portion, sharp as hell. That This is a great SOG knife. It's short, but they've continued the frame just long enough to capture your pinky. And no, that's not uncomfortable. I know you're asking that because it's just bare metal, but it isn't. You don't even feel it. Feels great. Uh, I have been very critical of SOG, um, but also it's like that critical because I love them. I want to see them do well. I know you're capable of so much more. You've got so much potential, you know. Uh, so this is this is them showing that potential off. Also, that's CTS CTS XHP blade steel. Not something that's easy for me to say. Never has been. So great materials, really, really excellent build, fit and finish, but a thick, thick boy. Um, thick handle, uh, wide handle, and thick blade. So a nice little chunker there. All right, second to last. You know I wasn't going to do this list without a cold steel, and I was thinking Raja 1 is a chunky knife, but I never carry the Raja 1. It's a big, big damn knife, so I'm not going to carry that. Uh, the the um, the full dress espadas, those are chunky. Nope. So I went for a knife that I actually, I carried this knife yesterday. Uh, so I decided I'd highlight it now because this is one damn chunky knife. This is the Formax Scout, another Andrew Demko design. And when I look at this, every time I look at this knife, or carry it, I, I have to measure the blade. I'm like, there's no way that's only four inches. It is a four inch bladed knife, um, but as you can see, pretty much on the nose, but it just seems like it's so much bigger. Maybe because it's an inch and a half broad and uh, quite thick and just on a massive handle and everything, but it just seems like a bigger knife to me. Um, you look at it here, this is a full quarter inches here on or a full quarter inch on the on the lock bar. It's just a or no no I'm sorry not a quarter inch that's a three sixteenth of an inch I think I'll see. Hang on now I got to check I'm talking out of school here like I I frequently do that is a quarter inch on the lock. It's a beast. This thing is a beast of a knife, but it's still somewhat carryable. It's pretty heavy. I think it's eight ounces. Uh, I put a lanyard on it uh, in honor of Jimmy Slash. He gave this to me. Thank you, Jimmy Slash. I love this knife. Uh, but just a beast. Just a beast of a knife. Uh, so that's definitely had to be in there. 
speaking of Jimmy Slash, I keep calling these chunkers. I get that term from him. He calls little big knives like this SOG, he calls them pocket chunkers. And I think it's a perfect term because that's what it is. <laughs> so, okay. Pocket chunker from Jimmy Slash was that that there. Formax Scout, a great knife. And that's an OS 10A. And if you feel like AUS 8A burned you, you know, during the during the early 20, 2000s and, and you want to get away from the AUS steels, I got to say, man, first of all, Cold Steel always did their AUS 8A. That A stands for annealed. Uh, really really well i thought i mean at least for my purposes and then you see other people who use their knives much harder and much more frequently a good friend of mine uh chewed his way through a recon one tanto over over a few years but just you know uh almost to the point where it was a drop point you know it didn't even look like a tanto anymore um but the thing kept going that os os eight this is os 10 which is two better so uh I've heard great things about this. I have used this a little bit out, out and about uh, in the backyard, but I have not noticed, a, a, frankly, a difference between this and, and 8A, but I have heard from others that we all know and respect that OS 10 is is really a marked improvement over uh, OS 8. Okay, enough of that. Enough of that malarkey. Let's go back to the classics here. Whatever happened to 420 HC? Oh, it's right here on my buck. So this is the classic buck 110, and this is a chunky, chunky knife. Now, it's it's arguably... Uh, hmm, where's the other one? Dag nabbit. Uh, it's arguably less chunky than the 112, which is the same width, same materials, just shorter. Uh, but I, I had to put this on the list because this is one of those knives that over the years, here, I'm going to try and hold it still. This is one of those knives that over the years I have wished looked the same and even felt the same, but was just lighter, you know, so I could drop it in my pocket. I know they've come out with the clip versions, but they changed the blade a little bit. And, uh, you know, this knife, I have lost out on a lot of use with this knife because it's just a boat anchor in the pocket it is just heavy and it's those this beautiful brass integral liner and bolster set up here with the diamond wood and um you know it's going to be heavy because of all of that but uh it's just it feels so good in hand that blade is so good that perfect beautiful clip point blade with that super thin hollow grind is so good and people think oh well it's 420 HC. All right. Well, I know that you're just way too much of a man to use 20 HC because you'll just chew through it in no time. But those of us who live down here on Earth, 420 HC, especially done by Buck with their Boss Heat Treat, which this one does not have, I don't think. Uh, it's excellent steel. It is excellent steel. It will do fine for most of your needs. Yes, you might have to sharpen it, but that will add character. That will add history to the blade. Who doesn't want to hand down to their grandchildren a buck 110 that's been sharpened many, many times and is thin? I do. So I better start using this one more. All right. So these are the chunkiest knives, folding knives in my collection. And uh, like I said, I, I, I decided to choose from a broad selection of, of brands and uh, or makers because, um, like I said, this could have been the Cold Steel show. Um, but didn't want to go that way. Could have been the ZT show because I have a number of bulky or you know chunky ZTs. Let's run through this real quick. Demco AD20. We've got the ZT0200. Uh, uh, got the off-grid Enforcer XL, the Lightfoot Custom Element, the Hinderer XM24 in Bowie. We've got the Super 7 from Emerson Knives, the F3 from Boker and Vox. And the Kiku XR from Sog Knives, the Scout, I'm sorry, the Formax Scout from Cold Steel, and last but not least, and perhaps chief among them, the Buck 110. What would we do without our chunky knives? I mean, this to me, um, even though they're not always the most pocketable, to me, they're the most compelling, the most exciting folding knives. I've always loved the big the you know i've loved the size of them for their weaponiness 
but that has actually evolved over the years into actually liking the size because, um, well, a, uh, I like the capability of it, even if I'm even if I'm not regularly taking advantage of it. But b, I'm an aesthetic guy. I'm a guy who pays a lot of attention to aesthetics, and I feel like the longer, chunkier format. The thicker, bigger, chunkier, longer format allows for the most expression of the design. You know, I always talk about the difference between the XM18 Bowie and the 24 Bowie. The 24 just has a little more room to elegantly express its lines. <sighs> thank you, thank you, thank you. This has been a therapy session, really. I mean, if you've if you've listened this long, I feel like uh, I owe you, you know, whatever you, your hourly rate is. Gotten it all out there today. Okay, so thanks for joining us on the Knife Junkie Podcast Midweek Supplemental. This has been episode 271. If you want liner notes uh, about this show or from this show, you just go to thenifejunkie.com slash 271. That's the episode number. Also, be sure to stick around and check out uh, this coming uh, Sunday's interview. Of course, tomorrow night, Thursday Night Knives at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join us and uh, we'll have a, a good old time. So for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch the latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.